Beatrice wasn't sleeping. She was normally an early riser, up with the sun, as her mother had taught her many, many years ago. But somehow, this Saturday, the body was a little tired, so she decided to indulge in a little soaking for half an hour longer. She listened to the growing sounds of the world outside, the musical sounds of the birds and the stirrings in the village. Through half-closed eyes, she sensed the dawn creeping stealthily into her one-bedroom wall house, which she kept scrupulously clean. And now it was in her bedroom, forcing her to close her eyes even tighter to preserve the comfort of the dark. Suddenly, her revelry was shattered by a raucous shout which bounced off the nearby houses in Moraine Village. She was now wide awake. She traced the sound to Sylvie's house, two or three doors away. She heard it again, and she made out a stream of abuse which scarred the peacefulness of the morning. That young mother Sylvie was on the rampage again, with one or more of her four children. Beatrice swung her aching legs out of the bed slowly, and with her feet felt for her old slippers. Annoyance turning to anger, she still spared a few minutes to thank her saviour for another day. Shaking her head, she threw on a worn pink housecoat and made her way outside to the tiny galvanised bathroom which she shared with her nearest neighbour, Jean. As the young mother continued to hurl abuse at her six-year-old Irvin, Beatrice stopped and stared, muttering to herself. Eh, eh, but here's Sylvie this early morning, no? But what's Sylvie telling them children? Sylvie, she shouted. Sylvie, what are you telling them children at all? Turning her head in the opposite direction, she continued. Neighbour Jean, you hear how Sylvie getting on out here? Addressing Sylvie again. No, man. What them children could do so bad for you to use them kind of word to them loud, loud so in the yard? What kind of respect you showing? You should shame her yourself. Sylvie, her face contorted with rage, curlers in her rumpled hair and tattered nighty flying open, was in hot pursuit of the offending youngster. You little wretch! I swear to God you go wash every piece of them clothes on that bed today. You better get the bucket and head for the standpipe, otherwise is mass in your tail today. By now, several other people were observing the disturbance. Beatrice continued. Them four little picnic you have? They might be your blessing self in the future, though you have to mind them now by yourself. I know it ain't easy, but you have them already. You just have to try your best with them. God go help you. As the pace round the yard quickened and Sylvie paused to break off a small guava branch, Beatrice pleaded more loudly. If is their father you want to cause who getting you vexed, that a say you must take it out on their poor little children. Go away living and deal with he instead and leave them innocent children alone. She was interrupted by a frantic squeal from Irvin, who barely escaped his mother as she lunged at him. Sensing support, the child, shirt tail flying and unhindered by trousers, headed for Beatrice's house and open door, disappearing into the safety of its walls. Quickly, Beatrice moved to block the doorway, protecting the wailing boy inside. He in my house now she said warningly to the young mother, who had pulled up short in front of her, hot and panting. Suddenly, Sylvie's body crumpled in defeat. Her face mirroring years of frustration, she slumped against Beatrice and cried uncontrollably.